Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at loading sound. And one thing I want you to take note of is the fact there's no sound in the library. None. So that means that this sound is being loaded directly from the hard drive. You can see I've got a couple sound files in here. But I'll also show you how to load it right off of the web as well. So how do we do this? Well, let's just quickly preview what exactly we're making. Press play and you hear the sound start, plus stop, press stop, and the sound stops. It's that simple. Well, it looks simple, but you'll see. So we're going to grab the stuff here for the sound button. I'm just going to create myself a couple little button symbols real quick, and I urge that you create yourself some buttons as well. Just say BTN stop and the play button. BTN play. Just like that. Now I'm going to grab the align palette. I'm going to select two stage. I'm going to align it to the middle of the stage both ways. Well, it's going to align. Oh, there we go. Make sure you align it to the stage. There we go. And the play button should be in the front. If the play button's not in the front, select it. Go modify, arrange, bring to front. There you go. It will definitely be in the front now. All right, select it, and we're going to give this an instance name. Um, let's just call this guy play underscore btn. And for the stop button, we're going to call him play, uh, or oops, stop underscore BTN. I'm going to grab this button and just realign it to the center. Close up my align palette. Okay, now what we need is an action script layer. So create a new layer and just name it AS. And select the first layer, open up the actions panel. Here comes the fun part. Action script time. Okay, we need to first request the sound as a URL, regardless of whether or not it is on the web or on our computer, we need to perform a URL request. So let's create a new variable to hold that URL request. So type var load SND for sound, and it is a URL request. Space equals space. It equals a new instance of the URL request class, and the URL it's loading is, well, let's say, Look at the files I have. I've got spooky.mp3, f18 underscore hornet.mp3, or helicopter.mp3. I can really choose any of them. I'm going to go with the spooky.mp3 here. So I'm just going to go spooky.mp3, close off the quotes, close off the parenthesis, and place a semicolon there. So we have our new URL request. Hit enter or return to get the line two. Now what we want to do is load this sound. So let's um, let's create a an instance of the sound class first, and we will load the sound into that. So let's uh, create a new variable, and let's call it this SND for the sound, and it is of the data type sound. It equals a new instance of the sound class. Open and close parentheses, semicolon, go down to line three. Okay, now we want to say this SND, which is this sound, it's also that variable, dot load. And here we just want to put that variable from the URL request, the load SND. So we're loading this URL into this sound variable. So this SND is going to be what ends up containing this spooky.mp3. Let's go to the next line. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am using ActionScript 3.0, and this is Flash CS3. So if you're running into issues, that is probably why. Now let's uh, script the play button. So let's go down a couple lines and say play underscore btn dot add event listener. We've got to add that event listener, and we're listening for a mouse event and the mouse event is a click and we're just going to name the function play f the play function and now we're going to create that function function play f it is an event a mouse event that's by the way mouse and event are both with capital letters mouse event the first event is just a lowercase e a closing parenthesis, colon, the word void, open curly bracket, enter return twice, closing curly bracket, and the up, the up arrow key. And we're going to say this, SND dot play. Open and close parenthesis, 
semicolon. All right, let's just check to see if we have any mistakes. No errors. That looks great. Let's close the action script panel. I'm going to save my file and I'm going to hit Control Enter. That'd be Command Return on the Mac. So it's a play. You can hear that. Now, if we hit it multiple times, it's going to keep going and going and going. And eventually it gets to be pretty crazy. Matter of fact, I should probably just, to demonstrate it, change this to helicopter.mp3. And now we have a completely different sound. And you can see, as I continue to press it, it sounds like more and more and more and more of them are coming, and they never stop. So, how do we stop that? Well, there's actually a couple ways we can do it, but, um, well, let's, uh, let's take a look at how we can do this the easy way, and then we'll look at the way that we're actually going to do it. The easy way is really the equivalent to that good old function back in ActionScript 2, the stop all sounds. Problem with this is in ActionScript 3.0, that is no longer existed, so nothing's going to work. It's a pretty easy uh, workaround though. We simply type sound with a capital S, mixer with a capital X, with a ca capital M, excuse me, sound mixer dot stop with the lowercase s, all with a capital A, open and close parenthesis, semicolon. And that's it. That's the equivalent to stop all sounds. Let's check to see what happened. Play. Hit play again, hit play again, hit play, keep hitting play, and you can see that it stops all the sound before it starts, so you don't have that overlapping and sound playing, you know, one after another, after another, after another, after another. All right, I'm just going to comment this out, that's uh, two forward slashes, and we'll just leave that there just for future reference. Now what we want to do is uh, make the play button disappear. So, here inside of the function, when the play button's clicked, we want to make the play button disappear. So we're going to say play underscore btn dot visible space equals space false. Flask. False. There we go. And let's close that, save our file, and let's see what happens. Click play, and hey, looks like the sound button just appeared. But it's really the play button uh, disappearing. So we need to do a couple things real quick. Uh, we need to make the stop button actually stop. Stop the sound, that is. So we want to do a couple things. First off, we want to make the stop button invisible from the get-go. So we're going to say stop button not visible. Now this is outside of that function. All right, this is right up here. So before this function ever happens, so the play button is still visible. Equals false. All right, now if we just leave this like this, save it, and preview the movie, when I play, it's going to disappear and nothing's going to be there. So we want to make the stop button reappear when the play button is clicked. Can you say visible? Visible, space equals space, true. Now, I'm going to save it, test it, and okay, cool. The stop button shows up. So let's duplicate this entire function, hit enter or return a couple times, paste it down here, and we're going to name this function stop f. We don't need the sound mixer note here. and we're going to switch this sound.play to this sound.stop, and we're going to switch play underscore btn.visible to true. And Well, actually, I'm going to leave this at false. I'm going to switch these around here. Stop btn is going to become invisible, and the play button will suddenly become visible again. So let's just let's test this. I know there's going to be a problem with it, but let's test it. Okay, okay, well we can't because we have a problem here with the stop action. So w that's something that is pretty important actually. You cannot in action script 3.0 simply just, you know, target a sound and say stop. So we need to figure out what we need to do. And there is this bit of code. We need to create and use a an instance of the sound channel class. So that's going to mean we need to create a new variable. I'm going to kind of isolate this variable so you can see what we're doing. Var, we call it var SND for sound trans or transformation, and is an instance of the sound channel, and it equals, or it is of the sound channel data type, excuse me, it equals a new instance of the sound channel class. Just like that. That's all we need to do, and then we need to use this SND trans to play the sound. Okay, right here. So we need to say SND trans space equals space, whoops, this SND dot play for the sound. 
And one other thing I forgot to add, I need to add that event listener for the stop button. So let's duplicate the event listener from the play button. Paste it right in there. Switch this to stop underscore BTN. Listening for that same mouse click, and we want to execute the stop F function when that is clicked. So come down here, and we just need to switch this.snd to snd trans.stop. And that should be fine. That should all work if I recall correctly. Let's try it out. When it stops, it stops. Perfect. And that's it. Okay? We made it work. Now, before packing up and leaving, I just want to show you how you can get sound right off of the web and, you know, incorporate it in your videos. So if you have a URL out there that you're linking to, if you're putting this up on a website, you probably have a URL. So how do we do that? Well, here we go. We're actually going to get the sound file from the berkeleyshares.com music page. So I'm going to come over here to Firefox, and it's a pretty cool page. And this is basically this essential tips for vocalists. I'm just going to hit download. And it's going to bring me over to this window where it is hosted, and it is simply a bit of quick time. You can hear that you've got some sound. So what we're interested in, though, is not the actual lesson. We're interested in this URL right up here. So I'm going to copy this URL. Right-click, copy. Come back into Flash, go to our Action Script layer, and up at the top where we're making that URL request, and we're requesting the Helicopter MB3, Instead, inside of those quotes, we're going to paste in this URL. All right, you can see it's pretty long. Just like that. All right, let's see if this guy works. Save him, export it, hit play. Okay, there's through Flash. It sounds something like what it should sound like. And that's it on the web. So it's the same exact thing. We just downloaded that live file from the internet right through our Flash player, just like that, just by switching out that URL. So that is how you do it. That's how you load sound, both from a spot on your hard drive and from a spot on the web. Hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you so much for watching.